So here we have obvious false teacher, Mike Todd. Okay, we know he's a false teacher. I'm not here to convince you that he's a false teacher. I'm not concerned with that. What I am concerned with is what we can learn from what this false teacher just exposed about his own devotional life or lack thereof. The key thing I want to stress in this video is that Christianity is supernatural. It's not just a decision that a sinner chooses to make. Something out of this world, something supernatural must happen to you so that you can do what the Bible commands you to do. Regeneration is the lost doctrine in the majority of the churches in this country. Okay, Nobody preaches on what it means to truly be in Christ. Every pastor just wants to stand up there and say really nice things about God and morality, but nobody is telling people what they must be. Okay, People are walking into the church lost and walking out just as lost. Vision gives energy. Number two, vision eliminates excuses. When you get a vision, excuses become irrelevant. I do tons of stuff I don't like doing because of the vision that God's given me. Can I be hot with y'all, humble, open, and transparent? I don't like studying to preach every Sunday. It is tedious work for me. I start on Wednesday to get to Sunday, and I'm working on Thursday and on Friday and on Saturday, and I'm tweaking up until 30 minutes before service on Sunday. Every week. but I will do it for the rest of my life. Why? Because of the vision God has given me. I don't have an excuse when God gives me vision. And this is why your excuses are louder than your production. It's because you don't have a vision. But let's eliminate excuses by doing what? Getting a vision. But regeneration takes care of the problem of the power of sin in our life. We are changed into a new creature who wants to do new things. Now, an illustration that Spurgeon gave. Imagine that we had two plates of food here. One very fine English food and the other thing a bucket of slop. And we had a pig in the studio and we let him go. He's going to run to the slop. Why? That's what pigs do. That's his nature. He's going to stick his head in there. He's going to eat. He's going to enjoy it. He's not going to have trouble with his stomach, and he's not going to be ashamed. Yeah. That's what pigs do. Yeah. But if in one second I could change the nature of that pig into a nature of a man, and he became a man, yeah. the very things he was engulfing down, he would be vomiting up, mm -hmm. you see. He could not enjoy it. It is against his nature. And also, he is not going to have the confidence of a pig anymore as a man. He's going to be ashamed for the very things he's doing. Now, as he notices that he's a man, later on, he may be deceived into sticking his head back in that bucket. But when he does, he knows it's wrong. And when he puts it in his mouth, he can't get it down. Why? He is changed. Yes. Now, when it says here that a good tree cannot produce bad fruit, it is not talking about Christian perfectionism. There's no such thing. As a matter of fact, one of the evidences that a person has been born again is that they recognize sin in their life. Mm. What it's talking about is a style of life. A new nature is going to produce a new kind of fruit. Doesn't mean that there's not going to be bad apples. Doesn't mean there's not going to be problems. But over the long haul, you're going to see a dramatic change. Now, when Paul comes to the church in Corinth... And we all know how they were living. They were pretty infamous mm -hmm. for their, their manner, their, their manner of living. Paul doesn't come to them and say, you know, you're acting really bad. Let's talk about the time you made your decision for Christ. That's not what he says. Yeah. He says this, test yourselves, examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Mm -hmm. Now, the great question always in the Christian faith is one of authority. What is our standard? Is it my emotions? Is it my experience? We all know that orthodoxy demands that we say the canon, the scriptures. That is the standard by which I must compare my life to have a biblical assurance. Fortunately, in God's wisdom, he gave us a book. It's 1 John. And in 1 John chapter 5, this is what the apostle writes. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. John, J.C. Ryle has a great work on this. Others do. John MacArthur. But John takes the epistle, and what he's doing is he's giving us a series of tests. And by comparing our lives to these tests, mm. we can determine 
or at least to a greater degree have a biblical assurance by the power of the Holy Spirit that God is definitely...